In this video, we are going to start building some of the user interface. Now, if you haven't worked with Laravel before, it's quite different than procedural PHP. In the previous CMS, we used very vanilla basic PHP. The HTML, our queries, our PHP was all integrated into the same file. However, with Laravel, you typically separate each of those concepts. For example, when a request comes in to a Laravel page, the URL is sent to a routes file, and that routes will look at the URL and figure out what step is to happen next. The routes file usually maps the URL to what's called a controller. A controller is a file that handles the request, the incoming data. It makes sure any models that are interacted with uh, happen and eventually it'll find a view. So the controller is kind of that, that engine piece that helps all the others work together. The controller will typically integrate data from the database, in which case it'll actually reach out not to the database directly, but to a controller, or sorry, to a model. Any interaction with a database goes through a model. And what the model does is it's this layer between the controller and the database that sets some rules. So for example, if we have a model for users, it would list which fields can be updated, which ones can't, which fields are encrypted, which ones aren't, which uh, other tables the user table is connected to and how those connections work. So anytime you want to talk to the database, the controller will use a model and the model just makes sure that that data for that table, for example, users, is handled properly. Once the controller gathers all the data together, it then takes that data and provides it to a view. And the view should be where all of your HTML exists. So the controller prepares the data, it applies it to the view, the view basically generates your HTML, and then you have a page. So it's kind of a lengthy process, especially when you come from standard procedural PHP. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a administrative dashboard for our application. All right, so at this point, I have my database open, my Laravel CMS database open. I have my host, my default page up and running. So again, I'm using MAMP to test. So there is my current page at this point. And I have my IDE open to my folder. So if we want to create a dashboard, I'm going to open up inside my routes folder. I have a file called web. This is going to handle all of my web site related routes. Okay, alternatively, I can put API routes in the API file. So I want to create a new route. And this route is going to be for my my administrative dashboard, we'll call it our console. So I'm going to create a route, a route for console slash dashboard. And when the console slash dashboard URL is requested, I need to specify here what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a co controller called the console controller. This is going to handle all of the login process, the logout process, and things like that. So when the dashboard URL is requested, I'm going to take our console controller, which we haven't defined yet, but we will shortly. And I'm going to run the dashboard function inside our console controller. And if I save, oh, I've got a mistake in here, just the wrong bracket there. Save. Right, now, if I go back here and now go slash console slash dashboard, we get a nice descriptive error. So Laravel is great at providing nice descriptive errors. So it's saying my console controller doesn't exist. Okay, so let's go to my terminal. And I'm just going to navigate to my 
folder here. So my application is in desktop slash personal. And then my folder is example app. Then I'm going to go PHP artisan, make controller, console controller. All right, so it said it was made successfully. If I go back to my IDE, go to my app, and then HTTP and controllers, we now have a console controller. So I can open up that. All right, so I have an empty template for my console controller, and here I want to create a method for the dashboard. So the dashboard does not need any database information. So there's not much to prep here. So I'm just going to create a method called dashboard. And this function is simply going to return our dashboard template. So to return a template, I say return view. And then the name of the template. In this case, it's going to be console.dashboard. And we'll make this in a sec. But that should be enough to get our router routing the URL request to this method in this controller. Hey, then I need to go back to my routes file and I need to include that console controller. So include app HTTP slash controllers slash console controller. And if I go back to my browser and refresh, all right, so this is the error we're expecting. It's saying it can't find the view. So at this point, console slash dashboard is hitting my routes file. My routes file is saying this applies to the dashboard method in the console controller. The console controller, the dashboard method is saying preparing any data, which in this case is none, and it's applying the dashboard uh, view. So the process is working. We just need a dashboard. So I'm going to go back to my application here. I'm going to go to my resources. And I have a folder called views. So this is the, the default home page that it provides. We're going to swap that out later. But we want to create a dashboard for our administration panel. So I've named it console.dashboard and what that represents is a folder called console and then inside that folder we have a file called dashboard. Now when you're creating your views here we're going to use a combination of HTML PHP and a templating language from Laravel called Blade. So let's start by just displaying a message and making sure that this works. So I'm just going to go h1, hello world, good old hello world. And now if I refresh, Hey, that whole process is now working. So my routes, the URL is hitting my routes file. My routes is forwarding that request to a method in the console controller. The console controller is preparing the data and then applying it to this template. Now, to keep this simple, I'm not going to use any blade templating tools yet. So let's just code our standard standard HTML page. All right, so we have a title and we'll just call this um, control panel. Or I guess in this case, this is our dashboard. All right now I am going to use a small front end CSS library called w3.css from W3 schools. So this front end library, I, I don't know if the intention was for this to be used kind of an industry 
I think it's more of a learning tool, but it's a nice, simple, super light CSS framework. So I'm going to include that. And then I want to include my own CSS and my own JavaScript file, just in case I need those for later. So I'm going to go to the public folder. I'm going to create a new file. I'll just call it app.js. And I'll create a new one called app.css. And I don't have anything to place in here yet, so I'll just leave those files empty and close them. But I want to, be, I want to have those prepared and ready in case I do. And we'll just throw in here a header. And in my header, we'll have an H1. This is going to be my project dashboard. So the CMS we're making, just like last time, is going to be built to manage projects. And we'll add some of our w3.css classes. So class equals, um, just put some padding in here, and then take our header and I'll just make this red. All right, and we'll save, I'll close this, and if I refresh that home page, you can see there are some default w3.css styles being applied. If I view my page source, I can test to make sure my empty CSS file is working. So that's working, or else I would get a page not found. And then my app.js, and that appears to be working too. And on our dashboard, all we're going to need is a couple links. So this admin tool is going to have three main tools, and that is to manage projects and we'll just use um, an unordered list no, actually before that let's wrap this in a section we'll apply the same padding then we'll use an unordered list and in here we're gonna have three links one to our project list copy that three times, one to our types list, okay, and I'm going to make these uh, plural, one to our users list, and that's it. Close our unordered list, close our section. And now if I refresh, there is my admin dashboard. So I, I know it doesn't look like a dashboard yet, some nice big squares instead of just a list and icons would be nice, but at this point we're gonna focus less on the design and mostly just getting this up and running.